So, with this episode of Rewrite, one of two things is about to happen with this review. A, I'm completely right, and I probably know far too much than I should at this point in the arc, as this is the first episode of the Terra arc. Or B, I'm going to be completely wrong and make a fool of myself. And I'm not sure if there's going to be a middle ground. It's either going to be I'm completely right or I'm completely wrong. I don't see any way around this. But let's go over some things here. As everyone who watches these videos, unless this is your first rewrite review, I'm pretty passionate with the series, and I go over the series with a fine-tooth comb more than most unless they play the visual novel. But in terms of anime onlys, I doubt you're going to find someone on YouTube who goes into it as deep as I do. Because I really enjoy this series. Because unlike a lot of these visual novels adaptations, I find with Rewrite, there's so much goddamn content and foreshadowing. And with Season 1, I did a lot of speculating. And similar to last week, things that I predicted in Season 1... I think are about to come true. Let's go over a couple things here. Really, I'm interested to see what the response is going to be with this review. So a lot has happened. So we're starting out the episode in an interesting way. This is a new future where, you know, we built the perfect Earth. So I was expecting that we were immediately going to be in the new route. And I'm not 100% sure if we are yet, because it seems to me we're watching the route that we kind of had hints towards before. Back in Season 1, we saw an older Kotaro literally get killed by the key or stabbed by the key, and we saw a young Katori, somehow she saved him with her powers. This week's episode, in this new world, as we're seeing his past before he was in this army, as we see him start out in this army, but we're seeing him, you know, how his high school life was. He's like 10 years older than the girls we know and love in the series. We have little cute sassy Gatori, we know a little Akane who can only say Pa, but we see exactly the imagery we saw in Season 1 that was not only in the opening, but also in a flashback. So when I saw little Gatori, cute as can be, sassy as can be, and an older Kotaro, all I could think was, we're watching the route that led up to him getting into that coma or we're going to see him end up in that coma. Because literally, everything is going in the route of, this feels like before everything bad happened to him. So hear me out here. Katori has this little dog. This little cute stray dog that Kotaro bashes and calls a little freak of nature, pretty much. And what ends up happening to Paro? He ends up dying. However, we know that Katori can make familiars. We saw her do that. Back in Season 1, I think the name was like Chibi Mouth or Chibi Moth, something like that. It was like a weird pink kind of puffball dog. She probably is going to revive that or create that into a familiar. She did it to her parents. I'm not going to be surprised if she does it to her dog. If her parents die in this arc or route, who knows. But I'm pretty damn sure Paro is going to become that dog. Ties back into Season 1. We saw Kotaro in Season 1 in flashback. I forget exactly how it was, but it was in the opening for sure. We saw him get stabbed by Kagari with her ribbons, and then she obviously saved Kotaro because we know she has the ability to save people like that. So I'm going to be curious within a few weeks if that scene plays out, because I have a sneaking suspicion that what we're going to see is, you know, we're on episode 4 right now, episode 8, episode 9, Kotaro's going to get stabbed by the ribbons, and Kotaro's going to save him, he's going back in that coma, he's going to wake up, but whatever Kagari, Moon Kagari did with this route, he's going to be able to stop it. He got involved at the right time. Something's going to change because I don't see this ending the same way Season 1 did with Salvation having to happen. I do think Salvation's going to start, but I ultimately see Earth surviving. Will Kotaro survive? Who knows? He might die, but I do think this route is going to end in a positive light that Earth survives. However, I thought he wasn't going to go back in a coma because the entire thing was he always got involved too late. That's always what happened, and that's why, you know, that 10-year coma that he always ended up in, that prevented him. So I thought they weren't going to do that, but seeing how we have little Katori... Older Kotaro, we saw him in a suit, get stabbed by the key, and then he got saved by her. But then we also have Esika who pops back in, a younger version of him now. But still, I feel like we're going to watch him join up with Esika. And I forget which side, I think he's on Guardian, right? If I'm not mistaken, I think I also predicted he would eventually join Guardian. But anyway, he's probably going to join up with Esika. 
gonna get wrapped into some shit, probably going to end up meeting the key, the key's gonna stab him, Katori's gonna save him, he's gonna be thrown into that coma, we're gonna do a time skip, everyone's gonna be the same age of Kotaro, because obviously whatever happened, because when we focused on him in season one, he looked the same age as everyone, however, he was in a coma for ten years, so obviously, when he's in that coma, he isn't aging at all, or that fast, I don't know which one it's gonna be, but we know that's the case, so we're gonna skip past that, and something's gonna change. Now, I remember, and I was really, really confused by this. Episode 1 of Season 2 of Rewrite. It felt like I had, like, 20 people ask me, why didn't I mention the scene with Katori and Kodoro where she says, you're not the Kodoro I know? And I said, well, we're dealing with, like, multiverses, things can merge and change. And now I think I feel like why I understand what's happening here. So, this Kodoro, the one that we know and love, isn't here yet. That Kodoro obviously comes after the coma. The Kodoro we're focusing on is more of a selfish, arrogant bastard. He's a lot less likable, but he's still damn interesting. He's much more in his own bubble, cares for his own being. He does have sort of good her, as I mean he did save Pero from the forest, but still, he's more self-centered. So when he's in that coma and he wakes up, he changed different personality, whatever happened, you know what I mean? However, we see in Moon Episode 1, Katori trying to kill the key, it's the only option we have to keep Earth going. I feel like Terra, the final episode or the or the second to last episode, that's where we're gonna ultimately end up. That scene in Moon, episode one, where basically he's trying to save her. However, I don't see the key just fully dying like we saw in Moon there. It's, I mean, who knows who's gonna live and die, you know? It could be none of these characters live, but Earthless, there's a lot of ways they can take it. However, I do think we're leading up to that moment that we saw in the first episode of Moon, and that's how Terror is gonna end. However, I do think the Earth is gonna survive some way. I don't know what it's gonna be, because I thought it was just him not being in a coma would do it, but he's gotta go back into that coma, because not only did that scene in Moon show them more or less the same age, so he has to go back in that coma. It's pretty much been foreshadowed with this episode in the opening in season one. There's a lot happening, but ultimately, I feel like we're watching everything before the coma, and then we're going to do a little time skip to him afterwards where they're all the same age, and then the difference with this route is going to take place, where he will be able to save it, but something's going to happen. That's why I say I'm either going to be completely wrong, or I'm going to be completely right. I don't see a middle ground. Maybe I am in a middle ground, but that's what I got from this. My mind was racing watching this. I was like, huh, this seems very familiar to the opening as... That's the character models I saw. Okay, Paro's prob- Now, I wasn't expecting Paro to die this episode. Like, and when he died, I was like, well, 100%, she's bringing that bitch back as a familiar. But that's where I see it going. So, yeah, I don't know if I'm completely wrong or right here, but that's where I see it going. So either my theories are going to be batshit insane like some of the season one were, or I'm completely right. I have no idea, but... This was a good episode. Really though, I have to say my favorite aspect of the entire episode, you know, removing my fun theories aside, that, you know, it can be stressful with me watching Rewrite because I literally have to think of everything I know and have experienced with Rewrite and try to make sense of everything, which a lot of anime only is just kind of watch week to week and don't even think this much, but it can be stressful for me, but I enjoy it. But my favorite part of the entire episode is the sass. The sassiness that this little Katori has. That shit cracked me up, and when she got sad with her dog going away, that shit broke my heart. Like, that was an adorable kid, I have to say. Usually I hate children characters, but goddamn was that adorable and heartbreaking when she got sad. But this episode was interesting. I mean, there's a lot to like about it. I mean, really, in terms of the visuals, it had, you know, the typical rewrite dips we're used to, but I didn't think it looked anything bad in any way. Some people are gonna still hate the CG used on those dinosaurs. I still like the CG. The new opening and ending... Fucking fantastic, easiest way to put it. Imagery, I'm not going to look into the opening too much. I did a big analysis on the Seasons 1 opening. I'm not going to do that for Season 2, you know. As much as I like the opening, I feel like either I already know too much at this point and I don't want to know more, but I will take a look farther into it when the series finishes so I can take a look and say, oh, so that's where they got that scene from and everything like that. But I have to say, the new Kodoro, the true Kodoro is what it looks like because he does go in that coma and his personality changed from what I can gather. So it's interesting seeing who he was before all this happened as he's kind of a selfish bastard, but it's interesting what he can do with his rewrite as he's always had it since he was a little kid. And I liked how he was like rewriting his DNA so he could use his blood as pretty much weapons. Like he was doing some sick shit like letting this like leech like feed off his blood and then just using his blood to spike through it. He's a little sick bastard in this row, but overall this episode 
It was interesting. I can understand why people are really into this terror route already because there's a lot happening. And I feel like, you know, a lot of the visual novel players probably when they got to this point were seeing like similarities or pinpointing things that might have happened in the visual novel. Unless the anime is just doing a better job at presenting it open like this. But anyway, I mean, this was a fun episode. I'm really interested to hear what people are going to say about what I speculated. Either A, I'm going to get Brandon, you're so full of shit. This is just like season one and you thinking, you know, Uchiha, or th I think was who I said could have been like one of those fairies or some shit looking back it was a crazy theory but at the time it seemed right but I either I'm gonna have some crazy theories or I just hit the nail on the head I really don't know what I ask though is please for people who know the source material do not fully confirm or deny usually I see pretty good shit like hey your your theories are pretty close to what's happening I'm always surprised just please don't 100% confirm or deny I want the anime to confirm or deny when I get to the point and I see my theories get confirmed or denied that's where I want the information to come from. But you can definitely talk about my theories, what you liked or didn't like, or even ask me other questions. That's all I have to say for this episode. It was good. It was, I mean, it's a, it's a little stressful for me to watch these episodes because I think far too much than I should. You know, I have fun doing it, but it's always just like, okay, we're like 17 episodes into rewrite at this point. You know, I got to think of all the individual episodes and come up with theory and ideas. I think it's far too much in this series, but I have fun doing it. But let me know your thoughts on my theories. What did you think of this episode in terms of an ad? adaptation and how are you feeling about the series overall and before you leave hit that like button if you did enjoy the video if you're new to the channel be sure to subscribe so until next time everyone please take care and have a good one